What's up guys, my name is Gary Blackwood, welcome back to the vlog. Today's vlog is going to start a little differently than the others. We're going to start off with a hand that happens towards the end of the session. It's a very bizarre scenario from start to finish involving these pocket tens that are on your screen. So super quick backstory, we're playing 5-5-10 with a straddle on. There's a player at the table, he's a much older fella, he's an Indian fella, really nice guy. He's on the waiting list for 5-5 and he's playing this game while he's waiting. He buys in for $500, Sun runs for a couple of hours, he's got like 2.5k in his stack and eventually they call him for 5 Five. He's about to leave, but he says that he wants to play his last button, completely understandable. So he's in the small blind for this next hand, but here's the problem. He's racked up, he's ready to leave, and he's put his white chips in his pocket. The hand begins, nobody has realized the straddle is on here. The button calls for 20, this player calls as well for 20. I of course raise from the middle blind, I've got pocket 10s, I make $105 to go. Both limpers make the call, we go three ways to the flop and it's a pretty nice 987 rainbow and this is where the drama unfolds. Ten bed. Do you have white chips? Do you have white chips? Yeah, I do. I want to put it here. Oh, what the? It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So are they in play? Oh, you cannot put a bed. They're I don't know how they're about to put the gap yeah. yeah, you can put it yeah. over. I don't know. That was too high. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I understand, don't worry, I understand. So the small blind decides to lead out, and as he's doing so, I realize that 80% of his stack is missing. This is the first point that I have noticed this, by the way. If I'd seen it before the hand or before the flop, I would have immediately said something. Also, really want to reiterate, this is not an angle, it's not slimy, this dude is really nice. It's a genuine mistake from a, a stone amateur, and you guys will see what I mean when I say stone amateur in just a few seconds. So he bets out for $105, I realize what's going on, I asked, do you have white chips? There's a lot of confusion. The dealer says you can't have chips in your pocket. A few people say the same and he takes a bunch of the white chips out. Also at this point in the hand I'm not sure if all the white chips have come back out of this guy's pocket. I don't know if they have. I don't know if they haven't. I feel like a predator if I'm like are all your chips out? Make sure they're all out. Make sure you've got them all on the table. I feel like that's a bit predatory. So I'm not really sure how to handle this situation. But sure enough, I've got pocket tens on 987. I do decide to raise. I think it's pretty clear. Raise versus an amateur. I make it $350 to go. The button takes a little time before folding. And now the action's back on the small blind. He makes the call. Do you want to get more money? No, I just, I didn't want to get, I just, I wasn't sure. The turn is the six of diamonds and after a little tank the small line slides in a rack of yellow chips that's obviously $500. He's got like 800 behind at this point. Stepping away from the weirdness of the situation for a second let's talk a little bit of poker. I don't really see the point in raising here if he can somehow have a, an air ball or you know just a complete nonsense hand. So I think the play here is to just go ahead and call uh, and see what happens on the river. The river is a complete brick, nothing changes. Can I just quickly say, I love the way the dealer has pulled in a thousand dollars worth of turn bets and just left them stacked there. It's absolutely beautiful. It's like something out of a movie. Action is on my opponent here and... Call. I call. You have more whites, no? You had about like no, 10 it's okay. It's okay. Right? No, I don't, I don't. I had a more, yeah. I think I it's okay. Keep it, it's fine. I don't feel yet. It's fine, keep it. The drama is not yet done though, because after the hand, my opponent, immediately after, he reaches into his pocket and pulls out the rest of his white chips. Remember, he wants to play his button. That's why he's still at the table. It's been about 20 minutes now and he's got one last hand. One of the other guys who's not involved in the hand, and who I don't know, I think it's important to say that, chimes in and says that this guy should give the white chips he's just pulled out of his pocket to me. And you can clearly hear me say, no, just keep them, it's okay. I think it would be a bit dickish of me to take extra money off the guy. Because let's be honest, if he had like, Jack 10, I wouldn't be paying him extra for the chips that are in his pocket. So I say, no, just keep them. It would be a bit weird for me to take them out of his pocket. So yeah, really weird hand, but it all happened so fast. It was very weird. Lots of people were talking and stuff and the guy looked really embarrassed. I didn't want to embarrass the guy anymore. Like I say, he was a very sweet old man. Let me know in the comments. We've got a really great vlog ahead. So let's get straight into it. I'm going to fade into the background now and we can get started. 
All right, super fun hand to start there, but let's get into today's vlog from the beginning. I did play a session a few days ago at a different casino, but it was a very tame session. So let's just skip that vlog altogether and get straight into today's session. Results for the trip are on your screen just now. Big swing so far, but I've been doing this for 11 years now. I absolutely love the swings. We're buying in for $1,500 today. Pretty good ace, queen, queen, six, single suited hand for the PLO double board bomb pot, but two anti-climactic flops and I am just done with the hand. Moving on now, we've got our first no limit hand of the day. I've got seven, five suited on the button. It folds round to me and I raise it on up to $50. We've got the straddle on for this hand. The big blind makes the call, the straddle calls, and we go three ways to ace, eight, six with two hearts and one club. I've got that open-ended straight draw, backdoor flush draw, all that working for me. I bet out for $50 and the big blind is gonna put in the raise here. He makes it $170 to go. What's more, the straddle is gonna cold call. This is really juicy for me to call here and see if we can hit a straight. I make the call, can we get some help? Nope, it's a board pairing eight. They check it on over to me and I don't think we wanna bluff this. I just check it on back, praying for some help on the river. Nope, it's the seven of hearts. The straddle is gonna bet out for $350 now. I let it go and the big blind Line check shoves all in. The straddle's actually gonna snap call here with ace eight. Do you guys remember that prayer I just said when I was looking for some help on the river? Well, good thing God wasn't listening because I was as dead as a dodo. Down $400 earlier on here, but the straddle is sticking, so at least that's not so bad. Next up, I've got ace five all suit in the big blind. The small blind has raised it on up to $60, and I'm gonna put in the re-raise here. I make it $180 to go. Now, I have never in my life looked at a four blind pre-flop chart and seen what the third blind blind is supposed to three bet versus the first blind but I'm sure there's going to be some low offsuit ace x hands like this and in any blind versus blind scenario it's really important to find these weird three bet hands in a two blind game with three bet hands like king five offsuit ace two soft suit ten four suited they're really important to find back to this hand now and the straddle is going to cold call my three bet really not ideal to be honest the small blind comes along as well and we go three ways to nine four three with two hearts this feels like it's one of those spots that's going to get really messy for me really quickly. I bet out for $180, happy to see the straddle get out of the way. The small blind is gonna stick around though to see a turn card, which is the Queen of Diamonds. My opponent checks it on over to me. I bet out for $270, planning to just blast it off on a heart river if I need to, but he very quickly folds. Really happy this didn't massively blow up in my face and I got stacked here. Good for the game to show a bluff. I roll over the five of diamonds and nobody seems to care. Still though, I managed to blast my way out of that prediction comment and no harm done. Ace-5 also working well for me there. Let's try Ace-5 of the suited variety just a little while later. It folds all the way around to me. I raise it on up to $50 on the button and the straddle is gonna make the call. He's a tighter ABC non-pro, not the type of guy that's gonna get too out of line here. We go heads up to the flop. It is Jack 4-3 with two hearts, again with a gut shot, again with an overcard. I see bet my hand for $60 and after a few seconds, my opponent makes the call. The turn is the queen of hearts, overcard to the board flush completing card as well i decide to keep battling here put a lot of pressure on a lot of hands that he can have here i bet out for 175 dollars my opponent is not to be deterred just yet because once again he's gonna make the call the river is a six nothing really changes on that six and while I don't think our hand will triple barrel ever in theory, I decide to go for it here. I bet out for $430, just trying to bully him off of like a jack, pocket sevens with a heart, ace four with the ace of hearts, lots of different combos that he can fold here. And I expect him to raise most of his flushes on the turn and most of his like sets and two pairs and stuff on the flop. So I think he's really, really capped when we arrive to the river. My opponent thinks for a long time and does eventually flick in the call. Disappointed that one never got through. He's actually got ace jack with no heart, Really nice call by him, and I make a mental note that this man cannot be bluffed or bullied, and I should never try to do so again. I top up my stack to 2k, it's a $1,500 cap normally, but if the straddle's on, you can buy in for 2k, so I top it on up to the maximum. It's been a really gritty day so far, so many small pots going against me that aren't really vlog worthy, not too many big pots coming my way, but the action is okay, so I'm not too worried about that. We've also got the $40 straddle on here, and I pick up Queen Jack off suit on the button, it folds all the way around to me. I make a very standard raise here on the button 
and the small blind just open rips for 2k total. I would need like 500,000 extra subs on YouTube before I'd even consider calling with a hand like this here. So if you guys want to see me making calls like this with bad hands, go ahead and hit that sub button. In all seriousness, there's just lots of stuff like this really adding up and I'm down about $1,200 for the day so far. Still, the grind goes on and 20 minutes later, I pick up pocket tens in the middle blind. $40 straddle is still on here. I raise it on up to $125 and the double straddle makes the call. We go heads up to the flop and we do flop a set, but it comes down queen, 10, eight, all hearts. Still a set is a set and middle set, you gotta bet. I bet out for $90 and after a few seconds, my opponent makes the call. The turn is a seven. It's kind of awkward here with the stack sizes. Do we want to like triple barrel this? Do we want to play for all the money? Do we want to check somewhere? I decide to just bet on the turn and then take it from there. I bet out for $325. And after a little bit of time, my opponent actually does just fold. It is a bit of a weird spot because yeah, we have a set, but can we triple barrel this and get called by a worse hand? Then again, if we bet the turn and he calls, checking back on a brick river seems insanely tight. So I think if my opponent had called the turn, I would have bet the river for value for sure. But he does just let it go. Down $1,200 for the day so far. And next up, we've got Jack, nine of diamonds in the small blind. No straddle at all for this hand. There's one dude at the table not straddling, and this is that hand. The cutoff is gonna raise to $30. I make it $130 to go on the small blind. The middle blind is gonna cold call. These guys love cold calling three bets today. The cutoff is gonna come along as well. We go three ways to the flop. It is ace, ace, eight, rainbow. I think my strategy on this board is to bet everything for a small size and then kind of take it from there on the turn. I bet $130, the middle blind calls and the cutoff just gets out of the way. The turn is a six of clubs, really nothing going for my hand here. I think we want to continue to barrel if we pick up equity. So a hand like 10, nine, five, four, turn club draws. This is obviously just jack high. So I checked my opponent, he bets out for $300. And I, of course, just fold. What a gritty day so far. No time to waste though, because just 10 minutes later, we've got Ace Jack off suit in the straddle. The button is gonna limp in for $20. The middle blind makes it $80 to go. The big blind calls, and I have a mandatory squeeze here. I make it $280 to go. Both players in the blinds are gonna make the call here. We're going three ways to this very bloated flop in position, and it comes down six, five, four, rainbow. What is happening today? What's more, the big blind is gonna lead out for $200. $25. I have to just let my hand go. The middle blind is going to call. They show it down at the river and middle blind has got pocket tens, beats the pocket nines of the big blind. For me though, I have ace high. I have to just fold. Real bleed for me so far today. An hour and 15 minutes later, I pick up six of five of hearts in the straddle. The big blind raises to $60 and I make it $200 to go out the straddle. He makes the call and we see the flop come down queen, 10, four, all spades. Nothing going for me at all here, but I do decide to see bet for $140. Just see if we can take it down right here, right now. My opponent, of course, makes the call. Nothing going right for me today. The turn is the nine of spades, four spades on board now. And now my opponent starts reaching for chips in his stack. Fold. You want it for the block? Sure. Yeah. What a great bluff, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Bluffing with the best hand, gotta absolutely love that. This is me down 2.5K today, but the game is good. Let's just keep it going. 10 minutes later, I've got ace, queen, all suit in the small blind. The cutoff is raised to $50. The button makes the call and I make it $250 to go. Big squeeze by me, but both players are not put off by the size of my squeeze. They both go ahead and make the call. We go three ways to the flop and it's another monotone board here. It comes down queen, five, deuce, all spades. Still top pair, top kicker. I think we've got a C bet here. I bet out for $250. We're a little bit deeper with the cutoff. I'm kind of happy to see him just fold. We're not so deep with the button. He's thinking over his options. Eventually he stacks up all his yellow chips very, very clumsily and eventually moves them all in. I asked the dealer for a very quick count just to make sure there's no hidden whites or like 1K chips or something like that. Let's just say I've been burned by that in the past. The dealer says it's around $650. I, of course, make the call. Running it once here against an unknown hand, a red turn card. That's good, I hope. 
A red river as well. Are we good? He says he missed. He shows ace, 10, also the ace of spades. And my top pair top kicker wins. Let's go. The cutoff also later tells me that he had ace king also delighted he decided to slow play pre-flop and that mamacita came out on the flop to help me win the hand really nice pot coming my way finally a big hand this is only going to send me down 1300 dollars for the day and 45 minutes later we have our pocket tens hand obviously a crazy hand really big pot there and this sends me into profit for the day it's been a really gritty grind not too many pots coming my way but then bang two lovely hands to send me into profit poker is a really weird game and it can just be like this sometimes. Not long after the pocket 10's hand, I'm going to pick up Queen 10 of Hearts in the small blind. The hijack raises to $35. The button calls. And I squeeze it on up to $145 out of position. Both players are going to make the call here. Can't seem to get a 3-bet through today. Big pot brewing here as we see the flop come down. Jack 7-3 with two hearts. Flush draw, over card, backdoor straight draw, all that jazz. I decide to see bet for $145. The hijack gets out of the way. Action is on the button here and yep you've guessed it he shoves all in this is the second time today that i faced a really unorthodox very large shove i might have a call here you know i asked the dealer for a count and she tells me it's fourteen hundred dollars i think that's too much i'm not calling it off here with just a queen i flushed off for that much money so i just go ahead and fold he shows me that he's got ace jack off suit for top pair top kicker his shove kind of makes sense now we actually rabbit hunt to see what would have happened the six of clubs hits the turn no help to me and then the ace of clubs would have hit the river this is a great fold by me obviously if the river was going to be a heart it's a bad fold and i should have called that's how it works right all right moving on now to our last hand of the day i've got ace queen off suit on the button in. I raise it on up to $60. The small blind makes the call and then the middle blind puts in the squeeze. Finally, someone else doing the squeezing other than me for a change. He makes it $300 to go and I think our hand probably wants to do some four betting in theory, but I decide to just pure call. I've got my reasons for that. The small blind gets out of the way and we see the flop come down king nine four rainbow. My opponent see bets for $225. I sigh. I fold after those two big pots coming my way. We're back to the bleed. This is actually going to be my last hand of the session. Not long later, I tap the table and rack up my chips. I won $175 for the session. Really tough day, but two big pots to save the day. As for the trip itself, I'm down 9.1k for the trip. Not ideal, but not a disaster either, considering the stakes that we've been playing. I played 85 hours this trip with an hourly of minus $107 an hour. Having lots of fun while playing and the content has been really good at least really appreciate you guys tuning in and liking and commenting and stuff like that it's been really well received so far if you guys are enjoying it then do hit that sub button it really helps out the channel that's gonna do it for this one guys thanks very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one